What is the MicroStrategy CEO's biggest fear? This is a safe question to ask. When it comes to Cardano ADA, certain people are cautious of what they say about it because it's obvious that the ecosystem is brimming with a great deal of innovation. But some critics are bold enough to present their shallow assertions. This is quite creepy, but is there anything about Cardano ADA that can make Michael Saylor rethink his stance on Bitcoin? With the way that Michael Saylor is always padded with confidence going around preaching about Bitcoin, one would be fast to assume that he doesn't have any fears or has never faced a nerve-wracking situation before. Well, to burst your bubbles, he in fact has. And this happened a long time ago. So let's take a trip down memory lane. Shortly after March 20th of 2000, which was the worst day of Michael Saylor's life, one of his blue-chip Washington lawyers, Brendan Sullivan, promised him that everything was about to get worse. This was just after MicroStrategy, the company Saylor led, was forced to issue a restatement of its financial records, effectively turning two years of profits into two years of losses. Saylor recalled Sullivan telling him this, This is going to be like getting on a raft at the top of the Grand Canyon. You're going to go all the way to the bottom, and you're going to hit the rapids every step of the way, and you've got to hold on. But Saylor was defiant. Even after MicroStrategy shareholders lost a collective $11.1 billion in a single day. Mother Teresa never quit during a down quarter, and what we're doing is just as important, was his response to the situation. He maintained that MicroStrategy's mistakes had been negligible. He told his friends that his company had been a victim of quote-unquote bean counter sophistry from his auditors, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and from the jackals in the press. Along the line, it turns out that there was something that Michael Saylor feared, and this was the Securities and Exchange Commission. Its former chairman, Arthur Levitt Jr., had placed a high emphasis on scrutinizing corporate accounting standards, especially for fast-growing technology firms. At the time, to have an SEC investigation pending for months or years could kill a young firm, especially a company such as MicroStrategy, which needed to raise money in the aftermath of its aborted $2 billion stock offering. The SEC, according to Saylor in his preferred Star Trek jargon, could vaporize us. A certain expert wrote an email to Saylor in April 2000, Everyone knows you're brilliant, but the one thing everyone comments on you is your need for humility. A lot of people, especially in the high-tech industry, know that accounting issues are complicated. Now it's time to show that this is a time of great education for you, that you are prepared to emerge as a new person from this experience. However, Saylor ignored the pout about admitting wrongdoing. Saylor himself said he never felt the comparison was fully appropriate to his situation. After the whole mess, Saylor recapped the story of MicroStrategy, how he always wanted it to be a force for a better civilization, and how he was sorry for all the pain he had caused his shareholders. He apologized severally, saying that as CEO, he bore the responsibility for everything that happened. As he finished speaking, his voice cracked and his eyes welled with tears, but it could have been an act and even the SEC officials were open to that possibility. Currently, Michael Saylor has got more wings to fly and Bitcoin is the only thing that makes sense to him. And it seems like he's not afraid of anything once again. In an interview, he commented that the SEC lawsuits against platforms like Coinbase and Binance will set the pace for Bitcoin to become bigger than it has ever been. Michael Saylor anticipates that Bitcoin's dominance in the crypto industry will shoot up to a whopping 80%, leaving only a 20% margin for remaining altcoins. He thinks that with so many crypto exchanges afraid of the SEC and delisting altcoins that might be considered securities, that Bitcoin is going to become the ultimate force in crypto. Now, I think that the public is beginning to realize that Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. The next logical step is for Bitcoin to grow 10 times from here, and then 10 times again. Taking a look at the crypto market, many investors out there have tried hard to diversify their portfolios. They have invested in multiple coins across a wide spectrum of assets as a means of ensuring that if one coin goes down, they have a chance of sustaining their wealth and keeping their stability. But the truth is that with so many exchanges and trading platforms getting rid of various altcoins, they will want to remain in the crypto space and then they will have no choice but to place all their money into Bitcoin, which could wind up making it the ultimate king of digital assets. Well, I guess Michael Saylor could be right after all. For the longest time, Saylor has been a Bitcoin bull, first catching the Bitcoin bug back in late 2020 and investing some of his company's money into it. While things appear promising in the beginning, by 2022, the currency took a serious turn for the worse, and Saylor wound up losing a bunch of cash for Michael strategy that has not been recovered. From there, Saylor left the CEO position where he worked for over 30 years and demoted himself to executive chairman. Well, that's a whole nother story. 
Discussing the present mind frame for the SEC, Saylor said, I mean, their view is that crypto exchanges should trade and hold pure digital commodities like Bitcoin. And so the entire industry is kind of destined to be rationalized down to a Bitcoin-focused industry with maybe half a dozen to a dozen other proof-of-work tokens. Plus, he foresees a time when all crypto exchanges in the world will turn their backs on altcoins entirely and focus purely on Bitcoin trading for their customers. Eventually, I have confidence that the crypto exchanges will come around to realizing that Bitcoin is the dominant asset in this space, and their business models are fine when Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 10, he added. Furthermore, in an exclusive interview with Altcoin Daily, Michael Saylor shared his positive outlook on the future of Bitcoin, underlying its potential to tackle pressing economic problems. Despite skepticism from the mainstream media, Saylor noted that prominent financial giants such as BlackRock, Citadel, Dutch Bank, Charles Schwab, and Fidelity are increasingly showing interest in Bitcoin, indicating a significant shift in perception. For Saylor, Bitcoin represents a robust and modern economic energy system, making it a solid form of money and property. He passionately argued that Bitcoin could potentially provide solutions to economic challenges faced by both individuals and institutions. Then, in a surprising twist, Saylor argued that Bitcoin's true adversaries are not traditional establishments, but rather other crypto tokens vying to replace it. He accused these tokens of spreading environmental, social, and governance fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or ESG FUD for short, to belittle Bitcoin's position. When asked about the approval of a spot ETF, which would mark a momentous milestone for institutional adoption and provide much-needed regulatory clarity, Saylor firmly believed that the development would unleash trillions of dollars currently restricted from investing in Bitcoin due to the charter or tax limitations, thereby flooding the market with capital through a spot ETF. The influx of funds could potentially fuel the price of Bitcoin to an astonishing $1 million per coin. While the crypto asset industry faces fear and uncertainty over regulatory clarity in the United States, trading of Bitcoin is hardly contested by regulators, but when speaking to CNBC, Saylor said that Bitcoin is the most certain thing in an economy full of uncertainty. Also, he welcomed the spot ETF developments from the financial giants, yet rejected the arguments that the ETFs would threaten his company's investment strategy. He said, You can think of Bitcoin as a beautiful house in a scary neighborhood that you have to pay in cash, and it takes a year to buy and never rent. Whereas the spot Bitcoin ETF is like the same beautiful house in a nice neighborhood that you can buy tomorrow with no down payment. However, if you remember what happened the last year between the Cardano founder and Michael Saylor, there are reasons to dispute Saylor's stance. Michael Saylor called Cardano 88 a security last year, and Hoskins since shared his thoughts. He compared Michael Saylor to Tone Vase, and the current period the crypto market is living through. Tone Vase, as the Cardano CEO reminded the community, used to be very popular for calling everything except Bitcoin a scam. Hoskinson explained that Michael Saylor had taken his place, saying that Bitcoin is the way, and everything else is a scam or a security. Furthermore, the Cardano founder reminded Saylor that Cardano is far more decentralized than Bitcoin. It has far more utility than Bitcoin. That is merely simply a store of value. And he stated that people keep buying ADA not just to speculate, but to spend ADA on various products and services offered by Cardano-based projects. Still, Michael Saylor called ADA security, while according to Hoskinson, the only real use case for Bitcoin is to speculate. And despite this, nobody calls Bitcoin a security. Then, Hoskinson said something quite sensitive. He warned that if Bitcoin does not work the way Saylor expects it to, he will go bankrupt. And this could be worse than what happened to his company many years ago. So, we ask, did Michael Saylor ponder on this statement at all? Well, who knows? But, that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to hit the subscribe notification buttons, and we'll see you in the next video.